Welcome to worship with First Baptist Church of Pendleton for August 2nd, 2020. Wherever you have gathered to worship this day, God is present with you. And may we together experience God's presence and worship God as a community of faith. Some may be gathered alone in a quiet house, others may be outdoors, and others may be in a room full of people with whom you have been spending a lot of time these days. Wherever you are and whatever your situation, you are welcome to worship with First Baptist Church of Pendleton, and you are a beloved child of God. Let us worship together on this day.
A reading from Psalm 85, 7 through 13. Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Steadfast love of the Lord never 
It is time for our children's time today, and I want to play a listening game with our children. I'm going to play a sound on my computer, and I want to see if you can tell what the sound is by listening to it. Okay, here is the first sound. Could you tell that that was sheep? Those were sheep saying bah. All right, here is the second sound. See if you can tell what this is. Those were dogs barking. And here is the third sound. That was a child laughing. And I have one more. Here's the last sound. That was the sound of people clapping. Oh, there go the sheep again. <laughs> I hope you could tell what some of those sounds were. Listening is very important. Sometimes when we listen to someone or to something, we can learn something important. And that's what happens in the book of Job. We've been talking about Job's story the last few weeks in worship. And Job listened to God. And Job learned that God was still there even when all of these bad things were happening to Job. We read a verse from the Psalms earlier that says, Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people. And so I think that's an important Bible verse for us to remember. Let us hear God. And I want to encourage you to listen to God because God speaks peace to God's people, all of God's people, all ages of God's people. God loves us and God speaks to us, sometimes not in a voice that we can hear, but sometimes we just know God is with us. And that is something very important and very special for us to pay attention to. Let's say a prayer together. God, we thank you that you are always with us. Help us to listen to you and help us to learn, like Job, that you are always with us. Amen. This morning, we are all invited to give, to participate in the offering as an act of worship and an act of faith. In times of doubt and struggle and worry, it is natural, it is human nature for us to, to retreat and to draw in on ourselves and to, um, to seek refuge. And so during this time of national uh, doubt and worry and pandemic, it is, um, it is natural um, and easy to forget that we are not worshiping at home because we have retreated. We are not um, giving up meeting together because we are afraid or because we are drawing in on ourselves. No, we are worshiping at home as an act of love and an act of sacrifice, giving up something that we love, our time together as a body of Christ. Um, giving that up in order to protect our neighbors and protect our community, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves um, by sacrificing for them. 
And so during this time of offering, I invite you to reflect on that, to remember that we are uh, doing what we are doing during this season, that you are at home watching this instead of in the sanctuary worshiping together because uh, we love God and we love our neighbor and we want to serve each other and to protect each other as best we can. And we trust that God is with us and that even though we have not gathered in person, we are gathered together in spirit and we're continuing to serve and work and love God together. And so as uh, an affirmation of that, I invite you to share in this time of offering to um, contribute to the ongoing work of ministry uh, of this church and of all God's people scattered around the world, gathering uh, in their own way and in their own time by the Spirit of God to worship our God together. So our offertory prayer this morning is inspired by the prayer of St. Francis, and I invite you to pray this prayer with me. O oh Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us bring love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is discord, union. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, let us bring light. Where there is sadness, let us bring joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console or to be understood as to understand, or to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name.
and they all lived happily ever after. We are familiar with stories that end this way. Often we wish for our own stories to end this way. Whether it is a relationship or a job or a move, when we make decisions, we often hope that we will find a happily ever after ending. Today, we conclude our sermon series on the book of Job. For the past several weeks, we have been exploring the story of Job in scripture, and we have heard about and read about and reflected on the great suffering which Job experienced. And today we find out the ending to Job's story, and we will discover whether or not Job found a happily ever after ending. You may think that Job deserves a happily ever after ending after all of the tragedies and losses he has experienced. Hear this story from Job chapter 42, the end of the story of Job. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful me, for me, which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself, and I repent in dust and ashes. After the Lord had spoken these words to Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. Now, therefore, take seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you, and I will accept his prayer not to deal with you according to your folly. For you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has done. So Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite went and did what the Lord had told them. And the Lord accepted Job's prayer. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, and he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Keziah, and the third Karanapak. In all the land, there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations. And Job died old and full of days. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This does sound a bit like a happily ever after ending. Job's fortunes are restored. Even more than that, Job now has more fortunes than he had in the first place. He has even more than what he lost back in chapters 1 and 2. But as anyone familiar with loss can attest, grief is not resolved by the addition of something new. That which Job lost cannot simply be replaced and forgotten. Job lost his beloved sons and daughters, his servants and his animals. He experienced physical suffering as well. And that kind of loss is not something from which one can simply move on. After all he has suffered, Job has changed. Here in chapter 42, Job is not the same man that he was back in chapters 1 and 2. And he will never be quite the same again. Loss has changed him in significant ways. Recently, our family discovered a book entitled The Darkest Dark by astronaut Chris Hadfield. It tells the story of a little boy who is afraid of the dark, but dreams of growing up to become an astronaut. And one night, he sees on TV the landing on the moon, and he realizes that the darkest dark of all is in outer space. 
And after that, the next night, he discovers that he is no longer afraid of the dark. He has changed. The dark is the same. The dark is still dark. But he has realized that the power and mystery and velvety black beauty of the dark. It's a beautiful story about a little boy finding hope in the darkness. And it reminds me of Job's story because it talks about how the little boy changed through his deeper understanding of the dark. And that is what happens to Job. He gains a deeper understanding of the dark. He sees the velvety black beauty, the mystery of the dark, and that God is part of all of that. Job understands not only the dark in a new way, but it is Job's relationship with God which grows through his experience of suffering. With Job, there is still suffering and pain and chaos in the world. That has not changed, but Job has changed, and his understanding of suffering has changed. His understanding of the world has changed. Job has a deeper and fuller understanding of who God is against the backdrop of the chaos of the cosmos. One of the interesting things about God's response to Job in chapter 42 is that God does not chastise Job for asking questions of God. Instead, God chastises Job's friends for thinking they already knew God's answers. In some ways, God's words to Job in chapters 38 through 41 do sound a little bit like a rebuke. God does say to Job, essentially, who are you to ask these questions of the creator of the universe? But in chapter 42, verses 7 and 8, God is very clear that God's servant Job is the one who has spoken rightly of God and that Job's friends have not. God says that God's wrath is kindled against Job's friends and they require a burnt offering and Job's prayers on their behalf. How interesting it is and perhaps hopeful that God's strongest rebuke in the book of Job is not for the one who questions why, but for the ones who assume they already know. I think it is an important reminder for us in this time of global, of global pandemic in this time of a deeper recognition of racism in our society, in this time of many personal challenges which affect us individually and as families and as a church. You might hear people say, we cannot question God, but Job would beg to differ. And God's response to Job suggests that it is indeed far better to question God than to assume we already know God's answers. And so may we listen. May we listen to learn, may we listen to grow, may we listen to understand more and more of who God is. God is bigger than we can imagine or understand, and that is part of the mystery and magnificence of God. We are not promised a happily ever after ending. As much as we may wish for one, God never promises us that. And even though Job does receive his fortunes again, it isn't quite a happily ever after the losses never mattered sort of ending because of course the losses mattered. His suffering mattered. His suffering was deep and genuine. And yet God never left him. And that is what we are promised. We are promised that God will never leave us. And what a hopeful promise that is that the God who created the universe, the God who brings order to the chaos of the cosmos, the God who is in the center of all the universe, loves us, cares for us, calls us, is with us. We may not always be able to understand. We cannot always understand. And it is okay to push back and to ask questions of God as Job did. And I think when we do, we will hear God call us God's servant. Because the book of Job reminds us that God wants a relationship with us. God does not expect us to always get it right. But God does want us to keep learning, to keep growing. Job is the one asking questions. His friends are the ones who think they already know the answers. Job is the one who is called God's servant. And so my friends, may we keep asking questions. May we keep delving into what is at times the deepest darkness. And may we find God there, the mysterious, the creator, the almighty God, who is always there in the darkness and who is always with us. Let us pray. 
Almighty Creator God, we give you thanks that you are a God who stays with us, even in the most challenging of times. And these days, God, there is much which challenges us. We pray that we would hold tightly to you and to your promises. We pray that we would be open to consider that perhaps we don't understand as much as we thought we did. Help us to be like Job, to ask questions, to hold on to our faith, to be honest with you and with ourselves. We pray, God, that through this, through whatever challenges we face, we may grow in our relationship with you, that we may grow in our faith, and that we may grow to be stronger and more faithful followers of you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us online today. I want to remind you that we are also having a blood drive at church today, August 2nd. The Blood Connection Blood Mobile will be at the church in the parking lot from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. You may go online and make an appointment. There is the link and details in your email or on our church website. If you did not make an appointment, you may still be able to make one today or just come as a walk-in. They also encourage you to fill out some of the paperwork ahead of time online if you're able to do that. But if not, you can fill it out there at the church when you come to give blood. This is a great way that we can continue to serve our community and to save lives. And throughout this time of quarantine and isolation, we have tried as a church to do different things. We cannot do a lot of the things we would normally do, but we have tried to continue to serve others and to love our neighbors. And so let me encourage you, whether it is by giving blood or something else, to find a way to love a neighbor, to serve God this week. I hope you will worship again with First Baptist Church of Pendleton next Sunday. God bless you and keep you. Receive now this word of benediction.